In this day and age, it's really easy to be negative about Overwatch 2. And honestly, I'm not absolved from blame in that regard as well. I've been pretty hypercritical about a lot of the bad things that Overwatch 2 has done. But ultimately, while Overwatch 2 may have struggled to make a lot of decisions moving in the right direction, it's also done a lot of really great things. And specifically, building on the foundation of what made Overwatch Game of the Year in 2016 is something that I want to elaborate on today. Because while there's so many things to be negative about, Maybe the reason that we're so negative about Overwatch 2 is because it's something that we love and we love so dearly. So today I'd like to present a love letter to Overwatch and a love letter to Overwatch 2. You see, Overwatch does so many things so unique and so well, I'd like to really take the time to not only share my thoughts on them, but some of the thoughts of people in my Discord. This is a group project that we did of name all the things that you enjoy about Overwatch 2. And honestly, it wasn't just astonishing the number of things that we came up with, but the number of things that I honestly took for granted until I played other games or until I actually thought a little bit more in detail about them. We're going to talk about game design, we're going to talk about aesthetic, and we're going to talk about hero design. And we're going to talk about a little bit more of those categories in detail. So let's start off with game design. Uh, I think one of the great things about Overwatch 2 is the low downtime. It feels like there's always something going on at all times. One of the reasons why I avoided the first-person shooter genre before Overwatch 2 is because while I tried some of the other first-person shooters, it felt like there was so much downtime. You see, I was a kid when I played Call of Duty, I never played Search and Destroy because I hated sitting and watching. And immediately, the immediate respawn and getting right back into the action was something that I had never really seen done as well in a first-person shooter. In addition to that, it's not just about the downtime, but also when you are engaged, there are so many different things that you can be doing. There's constant choices, left, right, up, down, engage, disengage, fight now, and use this ability or don't use that ability. There's so many choices, so many opportunities, almost treading the line of overwhelming, but for many of the times, many of the engages, never quite breaking that line to overwhelming. Certainly it can be overwhelming at times for a new player, but also that level of dynamics and level intensity is what makes it so engaging over and over and over again. And then along that lines is when you are engaged and when you are fighting, it's not just the same old, same old. Each engagement feels unique. It's a phenomenal mixture of both a first-person shooter and a MOBA. The decision-making, the macro, the positioning, the map control, the overall macro strategy with a lot of just, if you hit your shots, you'll do well. But you don't have to necessarily hit your shots if you position well and if you understand cooldown management. And I think that's what makes Overwatch 2 so unique. And in a world where we started to see a lot of first-person shooters incorporate abilities, Overwatch did that first, at least to that level. And I think that Overwatch still does it better than many other games. Overwatch 2 may have not been, and Overwatch 1 may not have been the first game that incorporated ability usage with aiming your gun, but I think Overwatch to this day is still the game that has done it the best. And while we're on that line, it's not just about the game design of shooting and moving, but it's also the whole feel of the game, moving about the game is tight. In, in many games, it's really just how you run and shoot and then a couple of abilities but with overwatch it feels like there's a whole additional fourth dimension of just how you move your character look at a character like genji lucio winston wrecking ball these characters not only feel unique and fresh with how their gun and how their abilities work but actually how they move around the map is unique and fun and when moving your character from point a to point b is fun you know you've done something wrong now let's talk about the aesthetic now aesthetic is something that is intangibly valuable. A lot of us tryhards like to pretend that the only thing that we're interested in gameplay, in balance, in gameplay quality, we don't care about the aesthetic, but really I think a little bit of us is invested in the RPG. I think we all enjoy feeling like we're playing the character that we're playing. And if a game feels and looks good, even if we don't think those things are important, they definitely affect our impression of how the game functions overall as a whole. I think the optimization is fairly decent. Obviously, it could always be better. I think it's hard to ever be fully pleased with how your frames and your latency feels, but Overwatch is a well-balanced game in that regard. The visuals pop at all times. Many some people, this is a bit of a downside, feeling a little bit cartoonish at times. And I was one of those people before I actually played the game, but once you're in it, it's really hard to go back to many of the dull gray uh, and almost macabre color schemes of some of the other games. It's exciting to just look at. The sound design is phenomenal. And this is something that Overwatch 1 was highly praised for, and I think Overwatch 2 has really done a good job with as well, as you feel the impact of each shot, uh, you're aware of flanks and angles, you know what's going on around you, and every sound, every everything sounds unique. There's no blurring of the lines of, what did I just hear? As you get better at the game, you know exactly what you just heard, which is crazy as we're rapidly approaching 40 heroes, not to mention the map sounds and the game design sounds and the objective sounds. Everything feels unique and it feels good. And along those lines, the music as well is something that 
many of us with competitive integrity in mind may be turned down a little bit. Man, each map theme is amazing. And then piggybacking off of that, because audio isn't everything, but how is the game actually fun? Uh, what are the intangibles like? And things like while you wait, being able to play deathmatch and custom games, really just the custom games in general, the option to do that. And beyond that, the workshop mode as well. So many things that so many other games don't actually have at least not done as well. And then even little things like the replay viewer, profile customization, and more. Overwatch is a game that's not just interested in the game experience once you're in-game, but also what do you do while you're in queue and, and out of game. The quality of life of this game is almost second to none in the first-person shooter genre. Finally, the maps. While many of us can feel very negative about some of the bad maps in the game, I think that we exist a little bit of a bubble where we don't realize how good we've had it until we've stepped outside and played other maps. And wow, this is actually phenomenal. There's so many dynamics. The visuals are exciting. We already talked about the music, but every map feels unique. And, and there's so many good things to say about so many of the maps feeling just totally different. And while obviously there's a lot of work to be done, in my opinion, there's also a lot of good things to say about the maps as well. Finally, we'll move on to hero design. And this may be where Overwatch 2 and Overwatch as a whole is just the greatest and it's not even close. Maybe the best thing about Overwatch is the hero design. Uh, it's unique. Every character feels totally different in so many different ways. I think you're talking about uh, a short Brazilian guy that rides around in the map. I talk about a character that has is literally a cyborg ninja, a flanker with a small hitbox but moves really, really fast. A literal, intelligent, coherent monkey a hamster? A guy with a big hammer and a shield? Basically a titan? Uh, I mean, the, the list goes on and on. I mean, you could literally go on and on about each character uh, in an Australian psychopath. Uh, and the funny thing about that statement is we could almost be talking about three different characters of that one, but each one of them behave very uniquely. It's incredible. And I think that each character not only has something for everybody, uh, but it almost feels like you are the character. Maybe it's the voice lines, maybe it's the kit, um, maybe it's the voice acting. I don't know, but whenever you play the character, you must feel like you take in some of the personality. And, and part of that is the personality design, but also part of that is just how the character feels. So unique, each different one. And there really is something for everybody. And I think going off of that, that character and personality not only makes you feel like the character, but if you study the lore and you know many of the documents and the videos out there, you start to expand the character beyond what's even inside the game. It gives context in a way that a lot of other games don't. I remember when I first got into the game and got into Genji, everybody knows that two dragons short. Man, you're like, I have no idea who these guys are. This is sick. I want to know more about this guys. It gave context to the character in game. And like we discussed earlier in that RPG element, it made you accidentally enjoy the game more. And that's something that a lot of games don't do near as well. It makes you not only play the game more, but it makes you enjoy the experience because you are in some ways that character. And I'm not much of a role player, but I think we're all accidentally a bit of a role player when we play Overwatch 2. It feels intense. Every character is intense in some way, shape, or form. Most characters are intense in some way, shape, or form. It's exciting to hit a big dash or hit a big shot with a minute maker or hit a big rip tire with, with junk rider or to hit a javelin as a Rissa. Many of the experiences are not only engaging and fun and dopamine inducing, but they're intense if you want the intensity. And if you don't want them, there's still characters that provide that value as well. Dynamic, and I think that's the thing here. It's like, if you want the intensity, if you don't want the intensity, there's a little bit of everything. There's high mechanical intensity characters. There's low mechanical intensity characters. There are characters that require a lot of game sense. There are characters that don't require as much game sense. And I think that while there's a lot of criticism to be had for maybe there's too many easy characters in Overwatch 2, I think there's also a lot of characters that are difficult but aren't mechanically intensive. For example, Winston is a relatively aimless character for the most part outside of his ultimate, and yet he's one of the most difficult characters in Overwatch 2. And I think that's, again, where you go back to there's something for everybody. If you're somebody that enjoys the more macro strategic side of things, where they require something more mechanical, there's something for you. And I think that's amazing. So it's not just about the play style, though, because there's something for everybody's play style. But there's also something for everyone's culture. There's a large representation of people. And I think that this is something that, you know, oh, you know, it's not that big of a deal in games. You don't need representation. But in many ways, I do think that this is a really big and great thing about Overwatch 2 is that no matter where you are from across the world, there's somebody that might be a little bit more like you. Australia, Europe, Asia, North America, South America, not quite Antarctica yet, I guess may kind of counts, but there's representation everywhere. And I think that like, again, this goes back into the little bit of the role playing where you are allowed to kind of be the person, right? You're allowed to be that cocky American, insane European. That was a joke. 
Uh, that's a Sigma reference. Uh, <laughs> we're the psychopathic Australian. Wait a second, Overwatch, you're trying to tell us something? But regardless, there's representation for everybody in this game. And I think that's, while I don't think it's necessarily something that you should be leaning too hard into, ultimately, a hero fantasy by itself, I am this character, isn't necessarily healthy. We all know that one guy that gets a little too obsessed with the video game identifies a little bit too much. But in a way, that does what make the game appealing. It could be a shelter from... Uh, some of the negative things in the world out there today, because you know what? I find inspiration in a video game. And while that may be a little bit odd, I think that's pretty cool. And I found that Overwatch in many ways does that better than almost any other game. So many negative things to say, but because there's so many positive things to say, I find Overwatch 2 to be a beautiful mess in many ways. A mess that has potential to be even better, to clean up the mess as well, but ultimately, even if Overwatch 2 never quite fixes every flaw that me and many others would love to be changed, it's still going to be a game that I love. And for many people, it's going to continue to spark those positive emotions and give an experience that none of us will really ever forget. So Overwatch 2, whether you improve, whether you get worse, or no matter what happens with you, so many of us that care and really appreciate so much of what you've done for us, and I guess this is more of a love letter to not just the Overwatch 2, because it is an in of itself an inanimate object, but more to the people that put the work into that object. So the designers, the hero designers, the artists, the voice actors, the developers, the leadership, the people that have done their job and done their job well, and done their job maybe without as much thanks as they've deserved. We appreciate you. Thank you for your work. And many of us wouldn't have so many experiences that we wouldn't have otherwise had. So that's all I got.